Of the whole crew here at Dirt Tracks, I'm actually the only one who's been to Newfoundland before, not in the winter. So I know what it's like there. And when the opportunity for this trip came up, I absolutely dove at it. I know how good that province is on ATVs and I was definitely the one who's gonna go back. This trip's gonna be a little bit different. I'm bringing Vern with me for his first Newfoundland experience. This season, we got to hook up again with Craig at Rugged Edge, who's an amazing guy. I met Craig originally about five years ago uh, on a trip to uh, China. And uh, we got talking and he was telling me all about his business, Rugged Edge and how not only is he a dealership, but he also provides a lot of tours. Uh, we had spun off this idea a long time ago that it'd be great for dirt tracks to come and visit. Great things we offer at Rugged Edge, we do private tours, we do group group tours, we offer, you know, we, we do things for corporate groups. Uh, we can also rent an RV, we do ATV, snowmobiles, and we can hook you up. We, we can do a full all-inclusive package. So if people want to come to Newfoundland, we, can try, we try to make it easy as possible. We can book your hotels, we'll book your meals, and we'll even give you advice where to go and what to see and stay while you're here. Finally able to sort of put this trip together with the help of Newfoundland Tourism, and um, we're looking forward to spending the week with Greg. After uh, landing into uh, Deer Lake and getting our bags and meeting with, with Greg, we got underway on our, on our route down south. And you don't have to go any further than about a couple kilometers outside of the airport and for you to start realizing how majestic is probably the best word the landscape is. One of the things that uh, I think Newfoundland is really well known for is how genuine and how friendly they are. And that level of hospitality hits you as soon as you get off the plane. And so we knew that within the first hour that this was gonna be a really, really fun uh, trip. The goal for this trip is to head up the west coast of Newfoundland unrestricted on our side-by-sides and ATVs starting from the most southern point in Port of Basque, heading north up through Cornerbrook, then ending the trip in the town of Deer Lake. But if you're in Newfoundland, it's gonna have all the great elements that my last trip had with people and food and lodging and all that kind of stuff. I'm really looking forward to this one. One of the major things we wanted to showcase with the Dirt Track show this time around was we finally got a missing link on the island fix. So, and again, with the new bylaw of City Cornerbrook have passed, this now opens up that link welcomes you know the ATV traveler exposed to a lot more tourist destinations amenities gas stations food some of the options that an individual have when they're touring Newfoundland is that they can do either a self-guided tour or they can hook up with the tour provider the the first uh, tour operator that we were getting hooked up with was uh, Pirates Haven uh, Luke was able to meet both Paul and Ruth the previous time that he was in Newfoundland and he was telling me all about them, how awesome they are, how friendly they are, and just how they're always out for the next big adventure. We met up with them in uh, Port of Basque. Port of Basque itself is a port town. I mean, the closest proximity to uh, Newfoundland to the main coast is Port of Basque to Nova Scotia. There really is two ways to do an ATV or side-by-side -side tour in Newfoundland. And the first one um, is for people who want to bring their own vehicles. There's only one way to get your vehicles onto the island of Newfoundland. So you've got to take the ferry. Someone has the option that they can either take their truck and trailer across to Port of Basque, or even better is that they can leave the truck and trailer in Nova Scotia, just load all their gear and their ATVs and side-by-sides on the ferry, take the ferry across. It's about a six hour ride. And once you get into Port of Basque, everything is trail legal. And so one of the things that Newfoundland has really embraced, pretty much all of their now city centers have ATV shared routes. After we are done checking out the ferry, we decided to check out Port of Basque, the town, um, which is a really quaint little place. Um, but we did a little tour around, checked out the town just to see what it was like, but probably good idea to fuel us up and stopped at Hotel Port of Basque for some lunch. Once we were done lunch, it was in the side-by-sides, and we had a, over a 100-kilometer trip to do for the rest of the day, which is a long way on a side-by-side. That then leaves uh, the town, and it's not far before you get to an area called Tabletop. 
you then travel up this long, long, long trail. It's, it's nothing too extreme, but it is a really, really long pull. And so you're just continually going up and up and up. To get up to the tabletops was really neat. It was rough, it was steep. Um, we had some fun, kind of Vern and I just ripping up there. It's probably close to about 2,500 feet or so. People who live in an area always think that what they have is super spectacular. So I just go at it with, you know, a grain of salt thinking, we'll just see how this is. Well, this wasn't a lie. This was one of the most spectacular places I have ever been. Uh, when we got to the top, it was like, okay, they weren't kidding. There in behind you is the sea. This is amazing, overlooking the ocean, overlooking lakes and the highway way, way down there where, you know, the cars are just like little tiny ants running along the highway. It was so cool. But I think the coolest part was that we were actually above the fog and kind of the clouds at that point. And as we were there, the wind picked up and the fog started rolling up over top of this cliff that we were standing on and you could see it happening. It was just, honestly, it was one of the coolest spots I've been ever. True experience of seeing like the scenery and the vistas that we're gonna come to expect day in and day out on our tour of Newfoundland. So as we left our first day in Port of Basque, we made about 110, 115 kilometers to Pirates Haven. Our first part of the trip ended at Pirate's Haven, um, Paul and Ruth's sort of ATV friendly trailer park and campgrounds. Well, Pirate's Haven is located in Robinson's. That area itself is known for back in the day when sort of pirates had sort of come on board to the shores of Newfoundland. And so that's sort of where the, the, the story begins. We use Pirate's Haven because of ATV friendly uh, campground, which is not so common in Newfoundland as of right now. Uh, Paul and Ruth, the owners, I've known them for quite a few years now. They have, they're great guides, excellent cooks, and they provide a saying, when, when you stay with them, you're getting an all-inclusive package. Really a cool spot, and it's got a restaurant on site, you know, they've got ATV rentals right there. It's a full-service place, and it's, a, and it's a really classy place. Their cabins are just fantastic. And we're pretty tired, so we unloaded our gear quick into our cabins, and at this point, not only tired, we were starving to death, but Paul had a real surprise for us. When he does a tour, he takes people out and does a cookout somewhere, and he can do a cookout of all different kinds. For us, though, he wanted to do an authentic Newfoundland lobster boil up. So we loaded up our gear and we headed out to this secret spot that Paul has picked out about 30 kilometers from, from Pirate's Haven. I miss our clothes we used to be. I'm As we got in, we quickly started getting into some of the serious foothills of, of Newfoundland. Uh, the terrain there is, you know, somewhat typical of what someone can expect, you know. It's like a, a sandy base clay trail system that gives way to some more jagged rocks as you climb up into the mountains. And as you get up to uh, one of the highest elevations, you quickly overlook this lake. And this lake is called Mika Lake. We show up at this totally secluded private beach on a lake. It was absolutely spectacular. The water was like clear, as clear can be. I've never seen water that clear in my life. It was also freezing cold for anybody who was wondering. I push the trigger without fear. We all meant to disappear. My life's been wasted by your side. Time to leave you far beyond. 
So as we got uh, onto uh, the trail, we met up with two other guys, and, and these are guys that come out and help uh, uh, Paul and Ruth uh, do guide a tour. The one gentleman uh, was uh, a lobster fisherman, and uh, he was out earlier that morning and caught about 30 or so fresh lobsters, and that's what he was bringing along the trip. We want some fire for a little while, we'll take long boys a bit. Go for a man, let's go. Go for a man bath right now? Oh well, yeah, water well, beautiful, man. <laughs> I know from in the past with Luke, he's not a big lover of seafood. He was convinced to eat fresh cod the last time. This time around, uh, we had some fresh lobster just hauled right of the ocean within hours before we cooked it. We went in and cooked it in fresh water, not from a tap, right from a, from a lake. I knew, again, that Vern would probably eat, you know, eat anything. But uh, again, I, I truly believe they, you know, to get out in the woods and enjoy some over an open fire. There's, there's no, you can't compare the taste of anything that you're gonna eat in the woods cooked that way. I'm gonna go for a man bath in here. There's a hot, hot tub right now. 60 seconds, like two minutes tops. They have an entire setup with food on it, tables out, drinks out, coolers. Paul's got his lobster boiling bucket out. He's making a fire. Like, it's all set up. The lobsters, and 15 minutes later, we've got boiled lobsters. So it was, if that's an authentic experience in Newfoundland, it's pretty cool to be a part of it. And, and actually, a lot of the people who come do their tours aren't seafood eaters, so they always provide something else. In this case, they had moose sausages and moose burgers. Your burger and your sausage is made overall leftover meat that's left there that's not you put for anything else, so to use that to make sausage and the burger out of. Right. Mine is not. I take a full quarter, hind quarter, front quarter, doesn't matter, right. and it's all made for, one's all made burger, one's all made sausage. Oh, yeah. So you get your prime. I mean, we had an incredible meal of sausages and lobsters, a lot of people maybe watching this segment thought, oh, these guys always get this special treatment, but that's not the case. This is a, a typical tour that Paul and Ruth put on for, for anybody. They, this, is, this is the true Newfoundland experience. And if anything, Paul and Ruth are some of the best representatives of Newfoundland, and they wanna make sure that when you come and you visit them, that you get that true, authentic Newfoundland experience. As day one came to a close, with the sun was setting, and we knew that uh, we had a limited amount of time to get from the beach over to what they call Robinson Head. The last time I was in Newfoundland here at Pirate's Haven, we went to a place called Robinson's Head, and it's right on the edge of the ocean, and it is, hands down, the single most beautiful place I've ever seen a sunset in my life. This time, we wanted to catch the sunset again so Vern could see it and see how amazing it was. We rushed out, we got there just in the nick of time, just as the sun was coming down. And as you come over the, the ridge out onto the coast, you just see the entire coastline. You, you see the Gulf of St. Lawrence, which gives its way out to the Atlantic. And up in the sky was arguably probably one of the most prettiest sunsets I think I've ever seen. The sky was rich with color of oranges and pink. And you were just looking from, from the far south through the far north, this, this vast sunset and arguably like, like where else in the world can you see such a beautiful sunset better than Newfoundland? One of the most warming feelings to stand up on the grassy fields, look out over the ocean, seeing the sunset, uh, is kind of overwhelming. And I think when I look around and see every person that we ever take there, everyone just stands and looks at the sun in complete awe. We're there for uh, you know 10 or 15 minutes, but maybe it seems a lot longer because it is quite an amazing place. And it's a great way. 10 your first day in Newfoundland, I'm sure it's a memorable experience for anyone to finish out their first day ride and end up with that look over Robinson's head. The first part of our trip in Newfoundland was absolutely fantastic. We rode over 100 kilometers, headed from Port of Basque up to Pirate's Haven along Newfoundland's newly connected trail system from the south all the way to the north. We had amazing food, we met amazing people, and we saw some of the most beautiful overlooks we've ever seen. But there was still a ton of riding to do if we were gonna make it to Deer Lake. 
So after sort of hanging out with Paul and Ruth for uh, the better part of day two, we thought, you know what, we better get on our way, otherwise we're not gonna get into Cornerbrook on time. So we left Pirates Haven and uh, took the trail system and we're heading towards an area called Stephenville. As we get close to Stephenville, there's a fantastic piece of land there. It's called Black Bank, and it's these amazing sand dunes and just a beautiful beach. So I kind of like to take people there. I don't, I don't tell people when we're going that they're going to see this nice sandy beach in Newfoundland. And people don't expect it. People expect Newfoundland is a rugged coast and lots of rocks. This place is so bizarre. I mean, it's amazing, but it's bizarre because you totally forget you're in Newfoundland when you pull up to this beach. And one of the cool parts about it is that you can ride right on the beach. A lot of places don't let you do that, but here you can. So we pulled out onto this beach. All of a sudden, we shifted gears from Newfoundland. We're in California. The first thing I thought is like, OK, I've been to places like this before. Like, this is like Pismo Beach and Oceana Dune and uh, along the coast of Mexico. But I'm in like the northern part of Canada, in Newfoundland. I've just come from the mountains, and now I'm all of a sudden down on the beach driving along the coast. But uh, as soon as we got on there, uh, the three of us, Craig, Luke, and I, we thought, you know what, game on. We had a little bit of fun and started racing each other up and down the beach. We were ripping down the beach full throttle, just having a blast. When we left the Black Bank Beach, we really had two options at this point, or, or you would have two options at this point. If you want to cut off of the T-rail, you can head into a town called Stevensville, which has got hotels, restaurants, it's got a mall, it's got everything you possibly need. And you could stay there if you wanted or go in for some food. But we had a lot more running to do, so we stayed on the T-rail and continued on towards Cornerbrook. If you decide to come to Newfoundland to do an ATV trip or bring your ATV and go for a ride, we have a wide range of riding trains here to take advantage of. One thing, forestry was huge in Newfoundland. We have loads and loads. We have hundreds of miles of forestry roads that are quite accessible by ATVs and easy to use. We have an existing rail bed that travels all across the island. And besides that, we have a great network of snowmobile trails. That's basically your, your main network and corridor to basically travel from the south through to the north is basically an abandoned rail bed. Provides sort of that, uh, that highway, that off-road highway, if you will. So you can really make good time sort of getting from city center to city center. It's probably the most well-maintained, wide open trail I think I've ever really ridden on that's technically an ATV trail. It was a nice ride. It was an easy ride. That was the thing about it that I really liked is after a lot of running the previous day and a lot of running in the morning. The one rail bed that runs into Cornerbrook sort of ends at a subdivision. And that subdivision is right in the bay. They call it the Bay of Islands. After all was said and done, we pulled into the outskirts of Cornerbrook. And Cornerbrook is a city. It's not a town. It's a, it's a large city in Newfoundland. You quickly look to the left. You're running along this Bay of Islands uh, coast. And that leads you straight into Cornerbrook. The first thing you really ride by, it's a bit of a landmark in Cornerbrook, is the pulp mill really the big industry in Cornerbrook. It's, it's been there forever and it employs a lot of people. It's actually kind of a neat spot too. You've got the ocean on one side, Cornerbrook on the other, and this great big mill in the middle. It's a pretty unique thing after riding down the T-rail for so long, after seeing so much wild sort of country, to all of a sudden, out of nowhere, ride into a big city. It was pretty neat. It was just June 1st of this year that the city of Cornerbrook did the, the, uh, the bylaw for shared route access for ATVs and side-by-sides. Part of it was they knew that we were coming and they wanted to make sure they had this in place. But the real reason why this came to be was because a lot of the hard work from, from individuals like Craig and other individuals that were sort of getting from the south through to the north, there was a missing link. So someone could sort of take that rail bed all the way up to Cornerbrook and they had nowhere to go. You'd have to get off your ATV, pack it into a trailer somehow, Get, get someone to drive you through the city to the next neighboring town where you can get onto the rail bed again and then continue north. All the years I've been riding and all the unique places I've ridden, I don't think I've ever ridden an ATV through a city center this big, this busy. It was, you know, it was, it was a city. It was awesome. And I gotta give big kudos to 
the city of Corner Brook for doing something like this, for, for being progressive enough and forward thinking enough to see the value in ATVs, to see obviously the monetary value in the, in the pocketbooks of ATVers as they travel. You know, ATVers spend money. It's a good thing. And it's something that a lot of other places in Newfoundland are now seeing the value in and sort of adopting similar policies for their towns. As you get into Corner Brook, you're literally going down Main Street Corner Brook. And Corner Brook isn't small. I mean, it, this is a population of 30,000 people. You have access to your food, gas, lodging. You can go to the drugstore, you can go to the grocery store, you can go to the movies if you want on your ATV. If this is gonna be a place that you stay during your trip, you'd never have to worry about getting a taxi. So we traveled through the middle of Corner Brook and we were staying on the other side of it. So at Rugged Edge, we don't only just do ATV or snowmobile tours and, and, and do retail. We also work with uh, some great accommodators in our area. We were lucky enough that Luke, Luke and Vern got to visit uh, some good friends of mine at the Salt Box, which is a new restaurant opened up in the Bay of Islands, and it's the first really for its kind. But it also, besides being a restaurant, a cool place to hang out, like the guys found out. They do kayaking, jet ski tours, boat tours. They've got this really cool information about the geology and our history of the Bay of Islands. You know, it's fun that you can be ordering an order of mussels from the restaurant and they're over there processing the same mussels that you're probably going to be the order of from the group anyway. So it's pretty neat little talk to Can we get you some? <laughs> so does this mean when there's two in here that I'm lucky? Yeah, that's bonus. That's what we call mainland mussel. That's how we get you hooked. <laughs> there you go. And we put two mussels in there for you guys and then we want you to, you want to come back and eat more. It's um, incredible how fresh seafood can convert someone from the mainland that doesn't like seafood because it's, you don't have that gamey, salty taste, right? It's just so fresh. One thing we hear daily in our shop or outside traveling someone, someone goes, you guys had dirt tracks. Well, yeah, that was a cool show. And, uh, and we hear all the time. So, I mean, we were glad to have them here once. We're extremely excited to have them back for the second time. I think I feel really, really privileged uh, to be able to get to know Craig a lot better as well. Um, I've known him as sort of a business owner and a tour opera, but you know, sharing this experience with him, I got to know him more as like a family man and his passion not only for the sport and how much effort he puts into making sure that if it's not snowmobiling, if it's not ATV, if it's not UTV, it's how can people really explore Newfoundland to its full potential other than just sort of taking a tour bus. Super, super nice guy. Uh, incredibly diligent, hard worker, and he's passionate. So we're now on our last day, and we've essentially come full circle. We're, we're, we're ending our trip where we sort of began our trip, and that being Deer Lake. And what we have in store for Deer Lake is uh, a tour of their big hydroelectric dam and the trail network that goes up to it. In the process, we we're gonna hook up with the mayor of Deer Lake, his name is Dean Ball, and uh, he wanted to give us the tour. Great, thanks for you. meeting us today. Thank you, man, good to see you. Burn, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you guys, welcome to Deer Lake. Luke. Nice glad to meet you. Glad Dean is a great guy, and he's a cool mayor because he's an ATVer. He's not just like a mayor who's ATV friendly, he's a mayor who rides ATVs. So this guy is like, he's on point when it comes to making sure ATVers are comfortable in his town, that he's got amenities for them. So it's just up the trail, is it? Just up the trail there, about a kilometer. All right, well, let's okay. get going. Yeah, let's get going. going. He is like dedicated to this, and, and he's actually quite a good rider. He can rep pretty good, so. and he's just racing up there, 100% in control, but Dean knows how to ride. And so that really bumped up the, uh, the energy level for the day. You would say to yourself, well, this is for the, like probably for the entire province or half the province, but it's not. It does only the paper mill 
in Cornerbrook. Like, think about that. Like, that's how massive the pulp and paper mill is and how much energy it takes to sort of produce the products that they're doing. It takes this whole dam. And that was itself was pretty um, amazing. The dam is from the 20s is when they built it. And when we're looking at this dam, all we could think about was how on earth do you build something like this in the 20s when you didn't have any heavy machinery? How did they do that? It's that impressive. What's the lifespan of that dam? It's 100 years. <laughs> we're, you know, we're hoping it's not 100. <laughs> but there's routine maintenance and dam checks every year. You know, 100 years ago, it was all manpower. So it's a great piece of history. Definitely get a better perspective from down here. Oh, absolutely. Close your tired eyes. We have a great relationship with uh, Deer Lake Power. They'll permit us to go on top of the dam with ATVs. Oh, OK. And so it is. Oh, that's kind of neat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah be able yeah, to yeah, cross yeah, over yeah. top there. Great relationship. Just the fact that they let you use their property for a trail and yeah, come absolutely. in here. I mean, most places yep. just shut it down and say too yeah, bad. Absolutely. Yeah. And 12 months a year. I mean, there's... So Dean wants to make sure that someone watching this episode can understand that, you know, yes, you have to sort of take that trail that goes below the dam on a regular basis, but just in case that water's high and they're letting the water out, the trail isn't closed. The city of Deer Lake and the municipalities want to make sure that you have that unrestricted access. And then we went up and got to ride across the top of the dam, and that was really neat. Like, it felt like you could put your arm out on one side, and then the other side was like 100 feet straight down. It was a really weird feeling. One thing we like about Luke and Vern and the Dirt Tracks crew is that filming or showing these guys places is like I'm with a bunch of buddies I went to school with. It's not pushing me to get up and do stuff we don't want to do. It's a great bunch of guys. I'm glad that they came back and did the trip for the second time. And uh, I can't wait to come back here in the snow so we can show them what their Newfoundland winter is all about. Vern didn't have any idea what to expect. And after it was all said and done, listening to him talk about Newfoundland, and basically mirror my comments exactly about how amazing it is, how great the people are, how scenic the entire province is, all the unique things we could do was really satisfying to me because I had gone home from my first trip and bragged endlessly about how amazing Newfoundland was and Vern felt exactly the same way. My enthusiasm for the area didn't let anybody down. It actually maybe wasn't even enthusiastic enough. It's been a while since I've been able to go on on a ride with Luke where we can spend, you know, five days going over a, a cool destination without having the pressures of work and just sort of experience the best of life. And that, that's probably one of the best ways to sum up your experience in Newfoundland. Going on a trip like this has got to be on an ATV or side-by-side -side rider's bucket list. It really does. And when I've come back to Ontario and I'm talking to people, I keep telling them, if you haven't been to Newfoundland, you haven't seen all that our country, but all that the East Coast of North America has to offer. You have some of the best vistas, you have some of the best landscapes, some of the best terrain that you can ride, some of the most genuine and friendly people you'll ever come across, and most importantly, a true Newfoundland experience. You made it through another day. Thanks for watching this Dirt Track segment. Make sure you hit the subscribe button where you can watch pretty much anything related to ATV and side-by-sides.